Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about energy method. So energy method as the name suggests is based on the conservation of energy which says that for a system at any instant total mechanical energy is constant which is the sum of potential energy and the kinetic energy. Now we are uh, deriving the equation for single degree of freedom free vibrations and we are also assuming that there is no damping in the system that means no dissipative element is being taken into account. Now at any instant total energy is what it is the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy which is constant. Now in this system we are not taking the effect of damping there is no dissipative element therefore the energy is conserved, conserved there is no loss of energy right. So what is kinetic energy it is half into mass into velocity square. So let's take the mass of the body or the system as small m and the velocity we are denoting by x dot, displacement by x and acceleration by x double dot. So this is the kinetic energy at any instant for the body or for any system. Now what is potential energy? There are two factors of potential energy. One is the gravitational potential energy which is because of the, which is uh, there when the system is in vertical position right see gravitational energy is always working but when we are considering the system in vertical position it plays the role and when we talk about the horizontal uh, system or the horizontal movement of mass in that case the gravitational potential energy is not taken into consideration so we know gravitational potential energy is mgh where h is the height right with which the body is displaced or it is moved in this case the displacement is denoted by some factor x so we can say that height is dependent upon x with some variable uh, so let's say that h is equal to lambda x the second component of potential energy is the elastic strain energy now what exactly happens when a force is being applied on spring and opposite equal and opposite force it is acting on the spring in the opposite direction which we call as the restoring force or it is the force which is actually the resistance of the spring to any deformation right so if we are resisting something what we have to do we need some work and to do some work there has to be some energy so energy so energy is what it is the capacity to do work so we can say that whenever the spring requires energy to resist the deformation whenever there is some elongation taking place let's assume so this energy what this energy it gets stored up in the spring which we call as the elastic strain energy or the elastic potential energy and to find the value of this energy we plot a graph between the force and the displacement we get a straight line and work done is what it is force into displacement so area under this curve it gives us the work done which is because this is a triangle so area will be half base into height so it will be this force is what this is the restoring force which is s into x right so this force is restoring force so it becomes half k half sorry s into x into x so it becomes half sx square right so this is the okay work done so these are the two components of energy that we'll take into consideration assuming no uh, damping is uh, happening in the system and now we say that the total energy is constant for the system so first let's take a horizontal case so because in case of horizontal uh, system there is no potential energy gravitational potential energy so the equation becomes half m x dot square plus half sx square plus zero right and this is the total energy now to find the maximum value of this total energy what we'll do we differentiate the equation and we equate it to zero so when we differentiate this equation what we get half m right so because we are differentiating it with respect to time and what is acceleration it is change in displacement with respect to time so x dot is basically dx upon dt 
and acceleration is what change in velocity with respect to time that means the x is a function of time right so the equation becomes so when we differentiate this x dot square it becomes twice of x dot into x double dot that means velocity and when we differentiate x again it becomes acceleration so for second term it becomes half into s into so this is x square so it will be twice of x into x dot right so uh, 2 gets cancelled out in both the terms and what we are left with is m and x also x dot velocity component being common it uh, you take it common and take it to the other hand so it becomes zero so what we are left with is this equation which says mass into acceleration plus the re spring stiffness into displacement is equal to zero and the equation we get can be written as this which is acceleration plus s upon m into x is equal to zero and if we compare this equation with the general equation for shm we find that the natural frequency for the system is under root s upon m now we can also apply the same concept for a vertical system so in a vertical system we can assume that there is a spring when we attach some mass to the spring there is some static initial deflection which is delta and when we if we want to pull this mass further so what happens the displacement or the takes place which is the value x right so initial the static deflection in the equilibrium position is delta and the displacement when we try to pull this mass downward is let's say some value x so now what happens in this case what is the total energy it is the kinetic energy plus half into s into now what is the total displacement it is delta plus x because we are going from this position from this position to this new position new equilibrium position so instead of x we'll use x plus delta square minus mg x because in this body what is the potential energy the gravitational potential energy in the downward direction it is mg x right so if we now because we want to find the maximum value of this energy we'll differentiate it with respect to time and after differentiating this is the equation that we get now you know how to do the differentiation right so 2 it gets cancelled out here also 2 gets cancelled out right so what we are left with m x double dot which is acceleration plus s delta plus x minus mg is equal to 0 now we can open this bracket so it becomes s delta plus s x now we already know in case of the static equilibrium condition when there was the static deflection when we added mass to this uh, spring so these two forces were balancing out each other so mg is equal to s into delta right so if we use this equation mg and s delta they get cancelled out and what we are left with is this equation which is same as that of the horizontal case so it becomes x double dot plus s upon m into x is equal to 0 so again if we compare this equation with the general equation of shm the natural frequency it comes out to be under root s upon m so in this way we can solve the uh, we can find out the natural frequency of any system considering that total energy of the system is constant.